All right, my friends, I am, uh, this is Roger again. I'm about as upset as I can get today. Our planet is ready to self-destruct. Literally, could be this year. Half of the, the vital signs, and I mean the most important half, are just totally destroyed. And they are going at a rate that is just unsustainable. And I mean so badly unsustainable that it could happen momentarily. And what they're saying is there is still hope. The researchers note an unprecedented number of scientists are speaking out about the climate crisis and are calling for massive scale climate change mitigation and adaptation to happen immediately for the sake of future generations. How are we going to change what's happening to the planet? How the hell are you going to do that? There's only one way possible, and that is stop burning and combusting. Okay, my friends, I have some really, really serious issues today to talk about. They're talking about the causes of global warming, and they believe is greenhouse gas emissions blanket the earth. That's carbon dioxide. Greenhouse gases are when you burn things and so forth. They, they go into the atmosphere. And they say they're blanketing the earth, trapping the sun's heat. It won't let it back out. That is not the case. That is not what leads to global warming. Let me show you what does. And let me first of all explain to you what the effect of global warming is. You think it's just as heat and it's, uh, the, the, you know, it's getting hot and so forth. Well, guess what? It creates all these issues. Primarily, you're working with floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, heat, cooling, irrigation. Water is going in the wrong places. It's getting dry where it should be wet. We're going to have droughts. There's going to be food shortages. Right now, there is terrible problems. And this thing with Ukraine is just absolutely insane, what they're doing there. We're going to have trouble with every bit, every sector of the economy, every sector of transportation, every sector of heating, cooling, water, all floods, hurricanes, tornadoes, fires, everywhere where they didn't expect them. And it's, it's just absolutely horrendous as you can see and getting worse and the reason is because of what I'm about to show you it's the scrub of our atmosphere due to the swelling of the combustion gases okay I am going to show you in several different ways that the Sun emits particles they're not just rays of waves whatever they want to call them they're actually particles and those particles hit the particles that are in our atmosphere that is literally glued like a tire rubber of a tire going against these particles that are trying to force their way in from the sun let's look at this closely because this is just not understood they think this is a complete vacuum there's just nothing out there and we're just spinning through nothing that's not the case we are spinning through a soup and they know this is called a quantum foam. All right, this is a solar eclipse. The moon is covering the disk of the sun, so we can't, we're not getting radiated. We can see what the sun does with its particles, and these are all particles. The sun is spinning this way. And I can tell you that for a fact because you see that red, red, red right there? That's the impact zones. They have their own little magnetic bubbles. And as they turn into the magnetic particles that are out here, they create energy. This is the trailing side, so you don't see these red spots. It just sort of washes back. These are the poles, up and down. Now, I can prove that this is nothing more than an electric motor. And here's the way an electric motor works. You have an armature in the center, which is just like this. It spins around and around and around. When it does, it spins against magnets, which are nothing more than these particles that are out here, the electric particles. It's spinning and forcing its way to crush into those magnetic fields, forcing electrons to flow out the end and down through a circuit. That's how, which creates energy. That's energy. Energy is energy. And that's what it's doing, creating energy. And the sun's surface is approximately 10,000 degrees 
and way out here where the end of its literally its atmosphere scrubs with space it's millions of degrees out there how did it get so hot out there if it wasn't scrubbing it is scrubbing and that, that because the, the sun is so big it scrubs really hard huge surfaces scrubbing against we're I, I, I think it's 400 times smaller I, don't, I can't remember but we're much much smaller so we're not scrubbing quite so hard but as we make our atmosphere swell because of pumping in all these combustion gases, we're forcing to scrub harder and harder and harder. Hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, droughts, complete change in the weather, heat. All right, this was from an article that came out today, and it's saying climate is a disaster, 100% disaster, but there is still hope. Researchers know an unprecedented number of scientists are speaking out. I am not allowed to speak in this realm. I've been trying for many years. We have to do massive scale climate change. There's no way for them to do it. They don't even know what's causing the problem. It has to be immediately done for the sake of future generations. I think I can do this today with the device that creates muons and electron neutrinos, which is massive amounts of energy. What we need is energy. If we had energy, if we had energy, not one single one of these things would be a problem. Not a single thing. Who's going to want to go to war? If you got everything you want, you carry around in a lunchbox. You got all the heat and energy and light and power and food. You can make food with this too. You can make clean water. You can build things. You can ship things. You can heat. You can cool down. You can irrigate. You have electricity. You have cars. And all it'll all be free. This would be the solution to the whole world's issues right now if we could use free power, and I think we can get it today. Okay, this is from an article that just came out today. Alliance of World Scientists, 26,000 subscribing members from 180 countries. It provides a collective international voice of thousands of scientists regarding the global climate crisis, environmental trends, all kinds of problems we're having with the intent to turn accumulated knowledge into action. Now, unfortunately, I, I am blockaded from interacting with virtually anybody. I've been put on all kind of spam lists and, you know, if you open this, there's a risk you're going to explode, that kind of thing. So people don't correspond with me. I don't know whether I'm getting through to them or not because I never get any answers. But I think I have a possible solution to this, but I, I need to be able to speak to somebody. Okay, this is why I'm upset. Fermi Lab has seen these particles, the fixed particle and the point particle. We have seen them too. Only we can actually direct them into creating energy. Now, here's what they're saying here. However, you notice the electron does have an electric charge. That's the electron neutrino. It has a charge, a field. And that sups up an electric field around it. I agree. That's the first crucial point. The second crucial point is an idea called the quantum foam, which refers to the fact that empty space isn't actually empty. All right, it's full of particles, the quantum foam. And there's an article about that right here. Same thing from Fermilab. They know that space is filled with these particles. They just don't give them any, any thought whatsoever. They're just there, oh well. Okay, so you saw us from Fermilab, the two particles, and that space is filled with these particles because they are light. Light comes from the sun. I showed you this very clearly. It's very, very hard to miss this. These are the two particles that they have found at Fermilab, the smallest particles that exist, the black one and the glowy little white one, which I agree. And the black one never changes. The white one does. We can shoot the white one through a venturi and create fission here and fusion there. In the middle we have raw energy, supposed to be at least 200 times more energetic than what we started with. Now, what we started with was light. This is free. This is actually free. All it is is a device to focus the particles to crush their fields. So, this is what's called cold fusion. It, it separates here and it fuses back to here. 
We didn't add any extra energy. Normally what they do in these big fusion factories they try to make, and they still haven't broken even, they are, is they put a ton of extra energy in and then try to get it back, but they never get back all that they put in. They had to put a ton in to get the f fission, and then with the fusion, they just didn't get enough back. We didn't have to put anything in. This is cold fusion. Because you fizz for free, you fuse for free. And there it is right there. And we created exactly what they want to do at CERN. We can use right in here a solar harvester and collect free energy. And all of that stuff that I am showing you right here that we used for almost nothing. All it was was a pulse red laser. And we used a smartphone with the CMOS. The same thing they're using at CERN and all the rest of the places to watch for these particles. CMOS is the, is the standard now to pick up on these light particles. We've been doing this for a long time. And right there, we should be able to get free energy. We're squirting out through the laser. It's coming out here. Fusion. I mean fission. Fusion. In between, before it fuses back, we grab it and let it fuse back later and use all of that energy. And that energy will be substantial. And it will be free. And lasers are on a shelf today. We had one photo receivers everybody's got solar panels now this is basically the same thing only we could make it even better because they don't have to be exposed to the elements this is going to be in a little box and we can use what they call perovskites now they're all they're transition metal receiving polar receiving um, metals basically and they so this is almost basically like light emitting diode only they're receiving and you can receive you know from a light emitting diode you can actually make electricity I'll show you all right I think I showed you this where the motor electric motor scrubs these um, copper coils against a magnet and it forces electrons into the copper and out through the motor to do to drive and this is a, a little motor itself now I want to show you the electricity here as I turn this it makes electricity, see? I got a negative. If I turn it this way, I get positive, see? If I turn it this way, I get the negative. Alright, now, let me show you what happens with an LED. And all I have here is, they, they make these little LED strips, and these light up really brilliant. And they face down, obviously, and you have a shield around them. And I just took this out of a strip of them. Now, what I did was I wired just to one of these. I'm going to shine a laser into that and see how much voltage we can create from shining a laser in there. Because that's basically what we're going to be doing here. We're going to be shining a laser into a receiving LED, which is normally it's a light emitting. These would be LRDs, light receiving diodes. And that's what it is. It'll put a little, let the electricity go in and create voltage down here to charge a battery. Let's see if we can do that. Okay, all I have is a standard little meter attached to the light emitting diodes. And I have a cheap little blue laser. And I'm going to hit right on there and watch what happens to the electricity. Now, you see this? This will receive. It's, it's receiving right now. You see this? 0 0.008, just from the ambient light, receiving into that light emitting diode. Watch. Down to zero. 0 0.008. Now, when I hit it with this, it's going to go up to almost 2.5 volts. Watch what happens. Now, I had to go up to the 20 scale. All right, here it goes. Boom, look at how that lights up. Boom. 2.4 volts. See that? 2.4, we made 2.5 volts just by hitting this laser, which isn't even on steroids like this is. We're just hitting it with the laser. So, I'm sure we didn't, we're not creating enough energy to override what we used in here so um, it, I'm sure this is not a gain situation even though it looks like we're, we're really getting some power 2.44 volts that's a lot of power from that little tiny LED now if we had thousand of these we have 2,000 volts 
and you could put these you could put a thousand of these in a lunchbox I mean they're just tiny and the the, the laser can be like the closer the better E 2.45 so they just can be right on top of each other thousands of them in a lunchbox and then whatever energy you could could get out of there that would exceed what you put in you continue your laser and you use the excess for free energy and I mean I'm talking about free zero cost these things are on the shelf today these these devices I just showed you I just showed you they just need to be engineered correctly and then within a couple of weeks we could be having these off the shelf and and, and I, I need somebody to talk to me that's what I need all right, what I have to show you is new science. It's brand new physics. It's dipole flood theory, which says there is nothing but dipoles, and every nucleus is made of nothing but electrons, which are dipoles. And they have found out now that the muon particle can be mag is, is a mag magnetism. They get all spellbound. They have no idea what to think. Also, they just found out now that the proton, which is supposed to be a big solid ball like this, and the only way you can st separate it is to smash it together with another one at the speed of light. Well, now they found out you put it in a magnetic field, you can do this to it. You can s squish it around, and it's like elastic. And that's because it's made out of little magnetic particles, just like I'm mo moving around in my hand. You put that in a magnetic field, it's going to change. It's going to push some this way and some that way. That's exactly what they found, exactly. And now they, have, they realize it, but they're still trying to stick to the standard model. It doesn't work. The only thing that does work is, is this, this one right here, which is the new model. It's simple. It covers everything, and it's the only two particles that exist are these, and protons are made of those. An electron is nothing more than a dark part and a burning part. All right? They're called neutrinos. When you took two those together, you make a photon. Shown it thousands of times. It's time to start working on this.